So an ICTP school in July, so it, but not, so, so, not in the same date, so you can go from school to school. And this one is in Madrid, and um, it's about complex systems, mostly, yeah, complex systems. And um, it's a kind of uh, cheap, because the registration is 200 euros, it does not include the accommodation, but there is an accommodation for 40 euros per day, which is fine. Uh, for Madrid, it's, it's very good. And also, I want to uh, um, uh, this is, uh, well, if you want to information, is, this is organized by the Division of Phys Statistical Physics of the Spanish Physical Society, but of course, everything is in English. And uh, uh, you can look for Jefenol, which is group of statistical physics and nonlinear uh, and school and uh, and 24 because there is a school every 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 year uh, and these are the courses you see that you have uh, neuroscience um, uh, machine learning of course artificial intelligence modeling biophysics etc. But there is one which is a kind of original, that it is this one, the um, um, uh, complex systems and sports analytics. And this is a, um, the, the, the lecturer is Javi Buldu, who is and Javi Galeano. Uh, Javier Buldu works for Real Madrid now, and Javi, Javi Galeano works for uh, Carolina Martin, or Marin, who is uh, the champion world champion of badminton, and they apply, um, they apply uh, especially complex networks. So, and they have a lot of papers of football. Here you see, if you, if you click in the name, you see uh, the project is in Spanish, but there are uh, some uh, paradoxes about soccer and things like that. So it is uh, a complex systems applied to soccer but also to badminton, so it's not only soccer, so it, uh, and, uh, and this was one of the courses, uh, complex system and sports. So uh, look, uh, look for Jefenol School 24 in Google, and you will have all the information of this school, okay. This is, um, I will let it here. And um, also before uh, continuing what, with what we did yesterday, we are, we are talking about thermodynamics. We are in the third lesson, thermodynamics. Um, but I want to make some comments, because uh, talking to you in the afternoon and so on, uh, we realized, Lee and I, that uh, there are some, uh, it, it, we need uh, some, some exercises, need some clarification. The first comment is um, uh, comments. It's also uh, to clarify the notion of, uh, of mutual information. Uh, as I said, um, um, as I uh, said on, on Tuesday, I think, when you have something which is a noun, a random variable, and you inquire about this random variable by questioning questions or measurements or whatever, the, the um, I is the outcome of the measurement. Uh, then the, the uncertainty, what the, the effect of the, of the inquiring of the, of the uh, measurement is to reduce, to reduce the uncertainty. This is the uncertainty after the question, this is the uncertainty before the question. And, uh, and there is a reduction, and this reduction is precisely, if you like, if you, like you can write this as uh, H uh, before minus H after. This is H after and this is H before, okay? And this is uh, the idea of mutual information. Information that we, we discussed this, but uh, uh, this also explains why H X uh, H X is the number of the number of bits 
need is to describe a system because if we, if I have if this is n bits and if I can make questions just no questions each one provided uh, an information so I can make n questions let's say this uh, y one y two y n in such a way that the, the, the information is one. Well, if, 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 the, sorry, if the questions are error-free, if the questions uh, are error-free, then we proved last day that uh, uh, the mutual information is the, inform the entropy of the, of the answer. Of the entropy of the answer. So, no, mutual information is equal to the entropy of the, of the answer. So um, if you make questions where this is one bit, each question reduces the uncertainty by one bit. So if I, if I have n bits, the first question reduces this by one, by two, by three, by, et cetera. If I, have, if I can make n questions, then with a one bit, then hx, will be n minus one minus one minus one, so it will be zero at the end. So this is why I, I, I only need n questions to, to, to solve the problem, to find out the value of x. And this is true for um, x could be numbers. We, we said that x is a random variable, it could be anything. And uh, there is a nice application of this which is, uh, maybe you have here about this problem, you have 12 coins. And uh, one, is, uh, one is false. No, this is a, fa a false coin. And, and, and it's false and it weights, it weights different from the rest. Maybe, maybe more, maybe it's heavier, maybe it's lighter. You have heard about this problem, never? And you have a you have um, a balance, and then you can put your coins in the two, and then you have to uh, find out which is the false coin in three operations. So you are only able to do to use the the balance in three operations. So the problem is, this is a problem that you can tell to a kid. It's mark. I mean, to, to somebody or to anybody, you don't, you don't need any mathematics, you just can solve it by using logic or by, uh, but you can solve it using information theory. So the, the exercise is uh, solve this, uh, so you, you only have uh, three operations, three measurements, And, and the question is, uh, well, you, you can solve it just by uh, thinking, I mean, by logic, uh, by common sense, let's say. But uh, the problem is solve, solve the problem using information theory. Solve it using information theory. So uh, you can calculate the uncertainty, there is an uncertainty here because you don't know the coin. Even more because you don't know if the coin is heavier or lighter. This is a, so there is a, and, and each operation, each measurement is a, is an, is a measurement. So, and, um, and then you have to maximize the entropy of the outcome. Eh? To maximize the information provided by the message. It's a nice uh, exercise tomorrow we can maybe solve it. Yeah. It implies that the measure information is the entropy of Y? The, of the entropy, of the, of the outcome. This is because, uh, this is because uh, um, Ix, this is very nice. I mean, we, we defined this as, a, it, we saw yesterday that it was symmetric, no? And so you can, def, you can uh, write this as this. 
The, if this is the outcome, this, this means this is this equation. This is the uncertainty before, and this is the uncertainty uh, after. But you can also uh, write it in this way. The interpretation here is not so clear because this is the unknown and this is the outcome. But if, 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 if the outcome is error-free, error-free means that y is a function of x. Maybe not in one-to-one -one function. Eh? Maybe something uh, I don't know. If x is if x is a dice, no one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, y can be. Uh, is is it odd? This could be a measurement. No, this is the no, and this could be the, the the measurement. And then this means that if if the if the person that tells you uh, that answers the question is sincere, I mean, if, if it is not a liar, then uh, y is, is, is a function of x, which is a uh, yes if x is uh, odd, so 1, 3, 5, and no if x is even. So error-free means that y is a function of x. In the case of a measurement, a measurement without error, X is the state of the system, maybe the microscopic state of the system, and you measure, like in the Silar engine, the, is the position, and then you measure right, left. If the measurement has no error, then this is just Y is left. If X is negative, let's say, if uh, this, is, uh, this is X, and this is zero, so left F. In this, in this case, for instance, Y would be F of X, equal to left if x is negative and right if x is positive. So uh, whenever this, is, this means that uh, uh, if you know x, the outcome is deterministic, which is the characteristic of an error-free measurement. Is it clear? And in this case, because this is deterministic, once you know x, this is 0. So this is hy. So in an error-free measurement, the mutual information is the uncertainty of the outcome. This is why people conf confuses information with Shannon entropy. That is a different thing. The real uh, measure of information provided by a measurement or a, or, a, or, a, or a question is the mutual information. But in many cases, because error-free measurements are very common, uh, mutual information is equal to the entropy of the outcome. So in the case of the balance of the, of the problem of the coins, you have to maximize the entropy of the outcome. So you need to arrange the measurement in such a way that the entropy of the outcome is maximum, which in this case, what would be the maximum entropy of a measurement? If it is just no, it's one bit no. This is the maximum entropy that you can have. If it is, uh, but the, the balance, the balance is uh, a just no experiment. What are the, the possible outcomes? Huh? No, the, I measure in the balance. I put some coins in the right plate. And in the, what are the pos possible results? Three eh? Three there. Are? Three, which are equal left or right. So it's the maximum entropy that you can get is log of three. It's not one bit. Eh? So this is the trick that uh, you can. OK, this is the first comment. So I, I hope with this you, you will have a clear idea of the meaning of, of mutual information. This is very important. Eh? So in this case, we don't have so heavy calculations as it sucks, but uh, it is, uh, there are a lot of concepts that are, uh, and the idea of the course is that you really understand these concepts. Uh, and to understand a concept, you, the best way, you have to look at this concept of this magnitude from many different perspectives. So, uh, OK, this is uh, the first comment. The second comment is, um, that uh, 
I, I realize that the exercise number one is a bit confused. People asked me yesterday, uh, the, 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 the second exercise, or exercise number one, um, is the similar engine where you can uh, have an error. I mean, you can, uh, you can uh, think that uh, the, the, the particle is in, uh, on the right. No, let's say we measure and it's on the left, no? So it's here, but actually the particle is here. So this is, uh, I plot this like a ghost. So, um, uh, and people see, uh, people uh, was using because I insisted a lot in the first day, on the first day on the pressure that you have to exert. <coughs> and if you remember, uh, if, if I think that the particle is here, I will try the expansion in this direction. So um, I will uh, uh, put my weight like that to, to, to uh, I mean, to uh, oppose the force to the pressure. If you do this and the, and, and the particle is actually here, it's, it's a mess. I mean, uh, uh, you finally, you, you, you get this uh, in this direction, no? And uh, so this is not the idea of the, of the problem. The problem, um, because you can do, in the cellular engine, you can move the piston by, by putting this pressure, or you can, in, and in fact, in many experiments, what you do is to control this, to co to your, your control variable is the velocity of the piston. So, so you have a, um, you move the piston at a given velocity and you keep this velocity constant and very small because it's quasi static. And then the particle starts to bump, bump, bump. But uh, the idea is that if you believe that the particle is here, you move the piston in this direction with a velocity v. Yeah? So uh, if the particle is okay, it's in, on the left, then one can, one can prove that the particle, one particle, when, when, when a particle hits a wall in an, an elastic way, it doesn't, the velocity is the same before and after, and the kinetic energy is the same before and after. But if the, if the wall is moving, the velocities are equal in the frame reference of the, of the moving piston. But in the laboratory, the kine this, uh, this velo the out velocity uh, is smaller than the uh, in than the in velocity. So there is a, a, a loss of energy, which is the work that we are talking about all these days. So don't think of the pressure and so on. Think just that. The, the, the part, the piston moves, and that uh, the work is just uh, the, the initial, uh, the, the integral of PdV, and that you can indeed use the ideal gas equation uh, and this is KT. Uh, log of final minus initial, and 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 with the com with the sign convention that we are using is like that. So, if if I have an expansion, this is positive, and this means that uh, the system is losing energy. It goes to the external agent, and if when I compress, the external agent has to do some work, so when I compress, this is uh, positive. I mean, this is negative, this is positive. So for exercise one, you can, you can do just this. Uh, which is, by the way, in, those, in these experiments where you have a Brownian particle, you can also um, think of the cellular engine, instead of this thing of the walls, which is a bit complicated, you can think of a Brownian particle here, in a, in, a, in a box, in a one-dimensional box, and raise the barrier and move the barrier. And this is, this is equivalent, and this formula is also uh, true for this type of uh, system. 
Questions here? Yeah? We put the minus sign because we are contesting. Eh? We put the minus sign because we are contesting the volume. And not the no, because the, because the formula, the original formula is minus PDB. But I just use this to check, to check that in compression work should be positive and in expansion work should be negative. We don't put the sign because of that. We put the sign because we said that uh, the the work is work is the energy that the external agent puts into the system, and this is always p minus p dB because when you, when dB is p is positive if you want, and if dB is negative, you are compressing and you are expanding. So then, how do you put quantum velocity in numerical simulations or uh, uh, in a numerical simulation? I think it's easy, you just, uh, and I think these are the, uh, when people has used, has, um, uh, people uh, simulate the, simulate the Cillard engine, I think it's like that. They move the piston. I insisted on the pressure because it's in the book of Maxwell Demon, but um, now I realize that it is a bit complicated, the, the pressure. They, they do like that, they move a piston like that. In the simulation, it's very easy. In each, I mean, it's, it's position of the piston is v times time, v times t, and, and that's it. The and then, and then, yeah, you compute, you 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 resolve the the collision problem, which is very easy. I th I think, uh, I think, v out uh, is I think is v is v in plus two times v. I think something like that. Because uh, when you are in the in the reference frame of the of the of the piston, where the where everything is fine, it comes out. But then you go back to the laboratory. This is you have to subtract v here and some v here. I think it's like that. But I'm not so sure. And then you uh, look at this, and then you calculate the kinetic energy and so on. No, no, it is a collision, uh, and there are no accelerations. Well, if, if it's true that the first day I said this of the pressure, and the pressure is more complicated because then you have to put a force, and then you get accelerations, and boom, and another acceler uh, transfer of momentum, and so on. So here, the momentum of the, of course, is, is, is more artificial because mo momentum is not conserved, no, because uh, the momentum of the piston is constant, and the momentum of the particle changes. So it is not conserved, so, um, and not even uh, the energy. And it's not, it's not conserved precisely because the particle in these collisions is losing energy. Where this energy goes? It goes to the external agent that it is fixing the velocity of the, of the piston. So in the simulation, it's very easy. You just put the piston like that, you compute the collisions, and then uh, you, you say that the, in the, the increase or decrease in, in kinetic energy is the work. And if you are wrong, if you are wrong, and, and, and so if you are right, the particle is here, and then you expand. If you are wrong, you are compressing, and it's the opposite. No? When, you, when the velocity goes like that, or um, then this is the minus. Sorry, this is the minus, no? <laughs> this is the minus. When the velocity goes like that, it's a plus. So you are putting energy into the particle. But to solve the exercise, you just use this formula. And then uh, the only thing that you have to do is what is the probability that you are, if you are right, you calculate the, the work. If you are wrong, you calculate the work, which is different because in this case you are compressing. This is also why you cannot compress all the way to the right. You, you have to compress up to some alpha because if you are wrong, you cannot compress to a zero volume. But this is the idea that you just compress with a constant velocity. So forget about the pressure and the weights and all these things that we discussed the first day, which are in the book of Maxwell Demon. And I mean, I mean they are important, but uh, to solve the exercises is much, much simpler, this, this idea. Okay? Questions? No? And for the third exercise, no, for the second exercise, the, the third comment, So uh, exercise number two, 
Number two and three, I think, because there are two x's. I don't, well, I don't have it here. Anyway, uh, exercise two. The ex uh, in exercise two, it's, it's just to repeat the arguments that I gave the first day on Monday on the Landauer principle. But I realized that the argument that I, I, I gave here was not so, I mean, was a bit uh, not in detail. So let me do the, the, the let me do the, um, the Landauer, the Landauer um, uh, uh, principle in detail. So you have a memory, the memory is in, in, in a, in a box, in, a, in, in contact with a thermal bath. This is the phase space. Well, actually, this is not a very good. I have the memory. I have my memory uh, so in, a, in contact with a bath. So the bath, uh, uh, and there is possibly a, a heat and a work, no? And there is an external agent, like always. Uh, and in this case, what happens is that the, 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 the memory, uh, this is the phase space of the memory. And uh, initially, the system can be in any of the, in any mi microstate. These are microstates. And then the phase space is split into two regions. One corresponds to zero, and the other corresponds to one, exactly like, for instance, in the double well potential. Okay, and by manipulating the Hamiltonian, or in this case, this, this uh, potential, you go from this to zero. So uh, here, the system can occupy all these microstates, and here can occupy these microstates. So the volume of, this, of, the, of the system, the volume in phase space, that the system can occupy is divided by two. This is what I explained on Monday. And I said, well, this reduction, because of the Liouville theorem, must be compensated elsewhere. And the only way to compensate it is in the bath. OK? But I didn't explain this in, in detail. It's a compensation. And, and why the compensation is to, uh, it, it looks like I have, it, it is going to depend on, the, on this volume, no? And uh, but the the the, pro the thing is like that the total volume in phase space initially eh, is uh, the volumes in phase space multiply if you have two systems volumes in phase space multiply why it's like on the configurations of uh, Isaac's uh, IC models if you have two IC models and this has let's say 100 configurations and this has uh, well, uh, 200 configurations, what is the uh, total number of configurations if you consider the global system? I can make any pair. I can, I can combine one configuration of this guy with one configuration of this guy. So it's the product. The total number of configurations is the product of the configurations here and the configurations here. This is why Boltzmann took the logarithm, because product is product. And if you take the logarithm, the product becomes a sum, and then you have a, a, a additive function, which is the entropy. So uh, the total volume is um, the system plus the volume in the bath. The bath is super complicated. The volume will be super big and so on. But this is a, so if I divide this by two, you know, in my process, this is initially. If I divide a, 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 the final is this one divided by two, then the compensation that I mentioned just using these words, but not very precisely, well, it's precisely, but not uh, in detail, to com I mean, this must be equal to this. So to compensate this, you have to multiply by two 
the bath. This is what you have to do in exercise number two. So you have to multiply. If you reduce the volume in phase space of the system by a factor, you have to multiply by this factor. OK. Um, now you apply Boltzmann entropy. Boltzmann entropy is uh, k uh, log volume. And if you go to, if you apply this to the bath, then here you will have the entropy in the bath. And, and, and when you multiply, you have multiplied by 2 the volume of the bath. This means that the, uh, the entropy of the bath, the Boltzmann entropy, this is the final minus initial, has increased by k log 2. No, just uh, you take this minus this, no? Take k log final well I, 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 I okay it's like that it's k log two no because it is the log of this minus the log of this is log of two and now you apply Clausius equation that tells you that uh, the bath is in equilibrium so the 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 increase of entropy is equal to minus the heat divided by the temperature. And, there, and, and then you compare this with this, and, and then you get that Q must be minus, K, minus KT log 2, which is Landauer's principle. So yeah, I, did, I said just a compensation, but I realize that to, to do the exercise, you need all this information, especially this information, that the volumes multiply. So if you reduce by a factor, one of the, uh, uh, and this operation, the Landauer overwriting is, you reduce uh, the, the volume, you have to compensate this, but what is this compensation? To double the volume of the phase space. Could you repeat why the total volume of, of the initial system is equal No, the, this is equal to this. The total at the beginning is equal to the total at the end. Why? Because the system, the total system is isolated and it's, well, it's isolated except for the action of the external agent and it's a Hamiltonian dynamics. So ah, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. And this is the consequence of uh, of Liouville theorem. You don't even need you don't even need to to uh, clear, uh, to to use the second law. You have to use this thing. This is Clausius. Clausius equation is a funny equation because Clausius introduced it as a definition of of uh, of entropy. Then in Boltzmann realized that entropy can be more fundamental, and and in statistical mechanics we use as a we use Clausius equation as a definition of temperature, and in the last twenty years when heat was not clear, we are actually using this equation as a definition of heat. So it's a question with three symbols, and the equation has been used to as a definition of each of these three symbols. So it is a. But uh, here you can use it. Uh, I mean, the concept, of this is true for systems in equilibrium, there is no any problem. So the bath is in equilibrium, so this equation is, is okay for, for systems in equilibrium. For systems out of equilibrium is when you have problems. Okay, so I think this clarifies the, the these are the three comments that I wanted to make that will help you to do the exercises. No? And uh, we can continue, any question here? Is it clear, everything? I can still understand why you define the volume of the system by two, but I, I understand that when you say to make 
like the Pokemon sequel, but why the Pokemon of the past is not divided by two? Like previously. No, uh, okay. The volume of the system is divided by two because uh, because the memory is symmetric. Eh? You can have other situations. You can have that. I don't know if you can if zero is like that. If zero is is like that, and then then it's different. And actually, I, the problem it goes in this direction. So this is just because by we have studying a specific example of a memory, which is a symmetric memory. Why we multiply by two? Well, because of this, we need that the total volume is constant. So if this is multiplied by two, we have to multiply by two this one. If this is divided by two, sorry, we have to multiply by two. Physically, okay, that's a good question. Physically means that uh, uh, this is, uh, okay. Uh, so you have the phase space of the, of the system. This is the phase space, well, the system, we call the system a memory. And this is the phase space of the bath. The bath is a system with many, many degrees of freedom. So it is a very complicated, let's put it like that. And it has something called energy layers. These are the, the, the points where the Hamiltonian of the bath is equal to some energy. So uh, in principle, well, uh, the whole thing is a mess. But uh, if, if, if the energy here is, if the, we can assume that there is no energy here. Because we can assume that every microstate has the same energy, which is a bit, I mean, this means that there is no kinetic energy or so. But uh, suppose that we don't have our kinetic energy. So the phase space available will be this plus this. I mean, this times this. I mean, any point here, any pair composed by a point here and a point here will be an available microstate for the whole thing. Now, of course, this is the, they both are coupled and things like that. Now, if somehow you drive all these points from zero to one, from one to zero, no? Because you do like that. And this means the compression in the phase space. So this means that this must increase. How? Well, this has a volume. This layer has a volume. Usually we call this volume omega e. What happens is that this guy introduces some energy here. It goes to some, to a new, to a new layer, which is precisely e plus q. Because you have, you have, uh, well, you in absolute value. You have dissipated kT log 2. You have dissipated a small amount of energy to the thermal bath. So the, these points in the bath, they increase its energy, their energy. And now you feel another energy layer, which has a more. And this difference. This is the energy at the beginning. This is the energy at the end. The difference of these volumes is precisely this factor. And this can be proved eh? because of the definition of temperature. But it's a kind of a complicated, uh, if you want to imagine this in a big phase space. But yeah, we have this, we have developed this intuition of a, is that, is, is clear? Sorry? We are considering the Lewis experiment. Uh -huh. And we say that the system and the bus, as a whole, so they are Hamiltonian. Right? So for the bus, I have the Hamiltonian. So when I think my system as a memory, so what is the associated Hamiltonian here? It could be, for instance, if the memory is a double world potential. You can think that there is a double world potential with a single degree of freedom. Actually, the memory does not need to be a macroscopic system. It could be P squared divided by 2m plus Bx lambda or, or lambda 1, lambda 2, uh, where V is this potential that you can uh, change in lambda 1, lambda 2. You can modify it. So 
Bx could be, for instance, uh, this could be p squared divided by 2m plus, and this is the typical, I don't know, x squared, uh, x4, uh, lambda 1, x squared, uh, lambda 2x. This typical 5, 4 potential or whatever. And then, now your external agent modifies, and then you have some interaction with the, with the bath. In principle, you can write down a model and do simulations. If you have a, ther a thermal bath, you can repeat this, all this without a... But we try to do in general. You know, when we, when we do this, this, um, these conclusions that you have, if you divide by two the volume, you multiply by two and you dissipate, Landauer principle, is independent of the nature and of the, as far as it's a physical system. Yeah, but it's, it's, in, it's independent of the details of the system. Okay? Yeah, if it is not symmetric, then this is not divided by two. This is what we are going to generalize in uh, tomorrow. But uh, I, I want you to have a clear idea of what is going on in the phase space and so on. And then uh, for, to derive all this, and now I start the lesson properly, to derive this, we will use this equation. Yesterday I finished with this equation where F is a, is a, the non-equilibrium free energy. And uh, instead of using this Liouville theorem and all these things, what we are going to use is uh, the, the second law for non-equilibrium states. Okay. So now you, can, you don't have any excuse to Solve the exercise. <laughs> and and as I, I've said this many times, but this one is especially important. Eh? The one that tells you, uh, because we are going to use this exercise to, to in all the lessons eh? next week and so on. Okay, so um, as I said yesterday, we will skip the fluctuation theorems. You have it in the notes, but it, we will skip it. And um, and um, then I will finish the lesson. We are in lesson three, thermodynamics. We saw uh, heat and work and um, the non equilibrium free energy. Q is, is always energy from the bath to the system, and minus Q is from the system to the bath. Uh, no, here, uh, here, where we, where we have, where in the in the blackboard that it was there, in in which step I've used quasi staticity. In which step? No, when when I wrote that, uh, what's your name? Fiera says that I've used quasi-staticity here when I said that the bath uh, uh, this is minus Q divided by T. No, because the bath is in equilibrium. So here this, is ha this has nothing to do with the process. This is just an identity for systems in equilibrium. Q is the heat 
that the system that the, the dissipated heat, the heat that goes from the system to the bath, but it, this is not um, so when. Uh, but it's true that I have used because I've got I've got the Landauer principle, which is k t log two is for quasi-static processes. If you if if you do the the race the, the Landauer process at a finite speed, you dissipate more. So where where in which step? I have uh, used the quasi-staticity of the process. Come on, there are not so many steps, you know. One, there are three steps in the derivation. The first step is that the system, the system divides by two. This is okay. So, there are only one step remaining. <laughs> The the total uh, when, I, when I say that the total is invariant, of course, it's, it's, this is Liouville theorem. It's a theorem, so the total initially must be equal to final. This is the theorem, but we said that the second law actually. You use Boltzmann entropy is not is not compatible with uh, with uh, with uh, Liouville theorem. Why? Because the the volume here can maybe is a nice thing like that, and here the volume is a, something very complicated. Only only if this, if the process is quasi static, the volume remains uh, something regular. So this is. This is a theorem, but this, let's say the effective volume, when you have this type of things, the effective volume, let's put it like that, effective volume, this is bigger than that. This is essentially the second law. The second law is that this, the motion in the phase space is so in, intricate that whenever you have a coarse graining, this increases the, the, increases, increases the volume. Yeah, okay. and this formula is only valid if the cis, if the bath is in equilibrium, which is, is equivalent to this somehow. In the in the, in the, in one of the two papers, in one of the two reviews, the one called thermodynamics of information, the second one, which is in the archive, you have a more detailed description of that. Okay, let's. Um, so uh, uh, yesterday we defined heat and work. Then we introduced non-equilibrium free energy, and we uh, and, and all the thermodynamic of information. I'm spending so much time in this uh, lesson because the, the Landauer principle is going to be a particular case of this. The Sealer engine is going to be a particular case of this, and and it's very easy. It's in, in, I mean, in one line. One can prove Landauer's principle, Sealer engine, and everything using this. So this is very important. Yeah, this is very important. And this is, we will, we will do this tomorrow. And Leah will do this also. Uh, we will use uh, Leah. We will we'll use this on Monday to explain the Maxwell D, the Sealer engine, and so on. Uh, to finish, um, so there were two. There were uh, three. One was heat and war. Three two was. Uh, uh, equilibrium free energy. We should uh, study now 3.3 and 3.4. 3.3 is a stochastic thermodynamic. And 3.4 is uh, fluctuation theorems. But as I said, uh, I prefer to focus, especially next week, on information flows, which is something which I think is more useful. If fluctuation theorems help to understand some things, but uh, uh, so. Uh, uh, we are going to do, uh, next week we are going to use something called information flows to analyze uh, especially molecular motors and molecular machines. Uh, so, um, which are motors that uh, work in biological cells and uh, it's a very important in topic in biophysics and in nanophysics as well because uh, you can also think of 
artificial motors. So uh, this is something that we will do ne uh, next week, but the, the mathematics behind these motors is, um, is the master equation for physical systems. So uh, we are going to study now um, Maybe this is known for some of you, but uh, I think there are parts which are uh, probably new because it took me a while to understand some of the things that I'm going to explain. So, um, so how you um, model a physical system which has discrete states like uh, one, two, three, four, etc. And, uh, and it's in contact with a the thermal bath. So you have here uh, these in contact with a the thermal bath at temperature T. And um, for instance, uh, one, two, three, four can be con conformational states of a protein. So the protein can be like that, like that, up, and, and it can jump from one state to the other. And these jumps are random because they're induced by the thermal bath, okay? So the way we describe this uh, first is with a probability distribution that depends on time. So this is the probability to be in a state i at time t, and we want a, a, a evolution equation for this, um, for this um, object. Okay, and what is the pollution equation for this object is the master equation. So the master equation sometimes is also called kinetic equation because this problem is essentially equal also to uh, uh, what we call kinetic models where these are species and you can have reactions uh, that convert species one into species two and so on. This is also a Markov chain. So in mathematics, people call it Markov chain. In physics, we call it master equation. In chemistry, kinetic equation. So, but it's the, in, in population dynamics, which is also the same thing. These are uh, different uh, species and you can go from one species to the other. And this is also, uh, um, you can think of this as a population dynamics problem. So the master equation uh, is uh, the derivative with respect to time of this pi. We will use the dot to uh, express time derivatives. And, and um, this is uh, um, the sum uh, over, I have a, I'm, 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 trying to see how the probability of being in a state i changes. So it changes because, I, because particles are coming from other states and they are leaving i to other states. So I have a kind of incoming flow and uh, outgoing flow. And the, um, the probability of these transitions is ruled by something called the transition rates. I will use this notation. But this is the transition rate. Um, when you multiply this by dt, this gives you the probability that uh, um, i that that a particle that it is at site i jumps to site j. Uh, let's say, okay, it's better to tell in, in, in words. Is the probability that condition to the fact that initially in an interval of time of duration, let's put delta t. So here, here uh, the system is in a state i. What is the probability that the system is in a state j after delta t is this thing. Okay. So, uh, uh, 
if I multiply gamma i j, or in this case j i, by p j, p j this is the probability that j is occupied, and this is the fraction of particles that per unit of time jump from j to i. So this is the this this product is the number of particles or the number of particles, the probability, the flow from j to i uh, per unit of time. And now if I subtract, this is the this is the incoming flow of probability. I sometimes I use particles and probability, you know why? Because if it, you can imagine this thing as a single system that jumps, and then pi is the probability. But, but if you imagine a lot of one million of these systems independent of each other evolving, then the number of systems in each state is n times one million pi. So you can imagine pi as the probability or as the fraction of particles if I have a big number of particles moving in this board, in this uh, network. So um, this is a, the incoming flow, flow of particles. And this is the outgoing flow. And what is that going flow? PIT gamma IJ, this is the number of particles per unit of time that jump from I to J. So this, this is a minus because I'm, I'm looking at how the number of particles in, in a state I evolve. And this contributes with a minus. This is outgoing flow. And one nice of writing this is using the current, the net flow. So I can use this j different from i. Well, I can use j. And this is uh, the net flow from j to i. So uh, the, it's called the current also. Let's. And this is called current. You can imagine, yeah, a large n number of particles here, and they are moving. Then you, you, you uh, sit here, and you look at how many particles go from 2 to 3, these ones. How many particles go from 3 to 2, these ones. And if, if you subtract one number, you get the net number of particles that flow from j to i, which is minus the net, net number of particles from i to j. So the current is an anti-symmetric matrix, if you like. Yeah. Is the current or is that? Is current or don't current? J, j is current. No, don't no I don't know what because is. OK, yeah, uh, yeah, you can call it density of current, because it is, a, it is a, the current per particle, if you like, if you have a many particles. Or is the, sometimes it's called probability current, which is the same as density current. So, so no, no, it's a sum over j. It's a sum over j. You are, I is fixed here, eh? I is fixed. I is my, I'm, 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 I'm asking myself how the probability at site I evolves. And, and it evolves because particles are coming and particles come from everywhere. So this is J, this is a sum over J only, eh? or if we can put it like that, J with J different from I. This is sometimes 
This is a bit uh, ambiguous notation because sometimes we use this to sum over j and i, eh? but here we only sum over j, eh? with j different from i. Actually, the problem with, we could say j because the problem is that the, 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 the transition rate from i to i is not, is zero, let's say, it's not, it's not defined, you don't need to define that. But this is a sum over j because it is all the outgoing, so uh, all the particles that are in i, jump from i to j, and they can jump everywhere in the network, uh, as far as the gamma is zero. So um, this, is the, this is the master equation, and um, and um, in most cases we are interested on the stationary solution. Well, one can, um, one can solve this, this is a linear equation, so one can solve it by diagonalizing this matrix gamma, which is related with some matrices, there are a, a collection of matrices called the stochastic matrices, which you should not confuse with random matrices. Random matrices is what you are learning with uh, Isaac. The stochastic matrices are matrices which are not random, are stock uh, and, uh, and they are related with these matrices. They have some properties and so on. So, but uh, this is the theory of Markov chains and we are not going to study this theory. Uh, I, uh, most of the cases, we are, we are uh, um, interested in the stationary state. When we say a state, we, we mean probabilistic state. Sometimes we have to distinguish the states are uh, the states are these possible states, but um, usually we also call a state the probability defined over this. No, these rates are uh, usually the rates define the dynamics of the system. For instance, uh, when you have a, when the states are mm, conform conformational, uh, I mean, mm, configurations of a protein, you can go to the lab and, uh, and find what is the probability that if, I, if my molecule is in a state one, jumps to a state two in a certain time. Okay, uh, good question. I was, um, um, actually, gamma i, I is not, is, uh, is not really zero. It's not defined, actually. It's not well defined. This master equation, one way, if you like to understand this, uh, uh, you can start with discrete, uh, discrete, uh, and then for discrete uh, time, the pro it, this is like, it, if you consider discrete time, this is like a game. So you, in each turn, you move. And this, this equation, uh, now t is integer. Uh, so uh, uh, this equation is like that. Uh, you have uh, minus p. Well, you have a sum over j of uh, the condition and a pro the probability to jump from j to i, um, pj. And, um, and now you don't have the other term because uh, you can only, because, you, because this is not an increment, this is just the new probability. And, um, and then you can go to the discrete limit by assuming the following. You have to assume that this is, this is the probability of a jump in a, in a given uh, time. You have to assume that this goes to, uh, in the discrete limit when this is delta t, in the continuous limit, when delta t goes to zero, this must scale like delta t. So you must have, because you have a lot of terms. So if in each term you have a finite probability to jump, you will have a mess when you go to the continuous limit. So you need that this scales as delta t and 
and JJ scales as one minus delta t. Why? Because you have many terms. So if you want to have something smooth, I mean smooth, something that to stay, you have to stay, you, have, you need a very large probability to stay. And then when you go to this limit, this is a lambda ij_i, which has units of one over time, and this is uh, something else. So there is no; it doesn't make sense to define the rate of staying because the rate of staying. This, I mean, there is no rate of staying. Is the, uh, the rate uh, staying is not an event? What it is an event is a, is a jump. Okay, but that's a good question. More? Yeah. You will give that term basically having both uh, gamma i, i, b, i, t cancelling each other in the incoming and outgoing flu is not a good view, right? Well, this is what we are going to, to, to study. Yeah, yeah, so, let me, let me finish this. Uh, okay. What is the stationary state? The stationary state is one state that doesn't change on, in time. So this means that this is zero. So this means that this is zero. So in the stationary state, the current, uh, J to I, in the stationary state, which is uh, independent, this is zero for all I. And this is a stupid, I mean, this is a stupid, this is obvious. So I mean a state, I am a state I. I receive 100 particles from here or from you, and I give you uh, 150. So I'm losing particles or money, if you like, if you prefer to think of money. So in the stationary state, the money that I receive must be equal to the money that I give. So uh, this is for any state. So for instance, uh, this, for instance, let, look at two. The money that two receives from one must be equal to the money that he gives to two. So this current must be equal to this current in the stationary regime. This j must be equal to this j plus this j. So let's say this is a j1 plus two, j2 to three. It's like a Kirchhoff loss, if you like. It's, a, it's the typical conservation of current in this case. So. Uh, um, so, uh, and this is, this is the, the idea of, but you can have loops, you can have like, for instance, you can have a currents like that, and even though to be, be a stationary. So, um, sometimes this is difficult to solve because uh, uh, um, you can have currents, but they cancel in this way. There is a special case, which is very important in mathematics and even more important in physics, which is the case when this equation, when the current, sorry, are zero in every pair. This is a little bit what you were saying, no? Uh, oh no, well, <laughs> forget. So when a, it, it doesn't cancel the money that I receive from him to, and I give to, to him, but each pair of us are okay, are in peace, and, uh, <laughs> and the same money that I give you is the same money that you give it to me. So this is a non-currents everywhere in the whole system. This is called in mathematics detailed balance, detailed balance. Why? Because remember, this is this is PJ. Now, now we are interested in the stationary, in the stationary state. Uh, I use a sub index. This means that uh, J. Remember the definition of the current. This is zero or this is equal to this. This means that this is the number of particles that go from J to I, and this is the number of particles that go from I to J. And they balance 
pair by pair. So this is detail. Detail means that uh, there is a, 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 in every pair we have this. The, the, the expression, you, maybe you have here the expression detail balance, which sometimes means <laughs> very different things. They all, all refer to this condition. This condition is in mathematics. In mathematics, when, when, when something like a, a Markov system, Markovian system like that behaves, uh, has this solution, then we say that it, uh, it obeys detail balance. This is, a, this is not necessary. I mean, uh, not every system like that obeys detail balance. Eh? But we are lucky. Uh, I mean, if detail balance is fulfilled, we are lucky because then it's much easier to solve the stationary state. In physics, why this is so important in physics? Well, in physics, uh, the, in equilibrium, if I have a system in equilibrium, now I have my system, and here my thermal bath, And uh, we have, um, oops, we have, um, uh, we have this stochastic dynamics in the system. It turns out that in equilibrium, for a system in, in, in contact with a thermal bath, the equilibrium solution should obey detail balance. So uh, the stationary state. obeys detail balance. So uh, this imposes a condition on the rates. This imposes a condition on the rates. Moreover, if we have a system in contact with a thermal bath, what is the state, what is the steady state, the stationary state, is the exponential, is the Boltzmann state. So EI is the energy of a state I. And C is the partition function. So we have this. So if we uh, combine detail balance and this quantity, look what happens. Uh, we have a, this is the number of particles jumping from J to I must be equal to the number of particles jumping from I to J. The partition function cancels, and this is a condition on the jumps, which is on the, on the transition rates, which is this one. And this is also what, in physics, we call detailed balance, which is it's a little bit more than detailed balance. Detailed bol balance plus the thermal state. No, stationary means for for uh, stationary is a concept that comes from uh, mathematics. is is for a, is the stationary solution of a differential equation, of the master equation. The stationary solution could be anything. Uh, in equi equilibrium, is a special case of a stationary solution, which obeys detailed balance, and which obeys uh, thermalization. This is thermal. But this is very interesting because you use equilibrium to prove the detail balance condition. So your gammas must obey this equation, this condition. But now you can imagine different things. You can imagine. For instance, you can imagine a system as simple as this, where maybe these transitions are mediated by a temperature. And this transition, because I have, this could be a spatial state, no? A particle jumping like that. You have, you can imagine like three wells. A Brownian particle and three wells. Actually, this experiment has been done 
with optical tweezers. You can have three optical tweezers. When I say optical tweezers and Brownian particles, you know, everybody knows what it is. No? Uh, uh, optical tweezers are just a, a way of trapping particles in, in, in harmonic potentials that you can have. And it's made using lasers. There are like three Nobel Prizes associated with optical tweezers. And uh, I think three. Um, one for the inventor, the second one for the application to biophysics, and I think there are three, third one. But anyway, uh, uh, you can have, like, like in a egg, uh, I mean, you can have different wells in space um, and induce jumps. So this could be like that, and, and now you can induce, you can assume that the jumps between three and two are, are induced by another, another temperature, because you can have a temperature gradient. So if you have this, uh, this will not obey detailed balance, because probably, I don't know. But the gamma sh should obey detailed balance locally. So you will have a beta, you, you will have that the, you will have a, a detailed balance condition between one and two with T1, between one and three with T1, and between two and three with T2. So you, will, you use this detailed balance condition to fix or to limit uh, or to define the gammas, but then your full, uh, full system, because it's in contact with different temperatures, maybe it does not obey detailed balance globally. So this is the nice thing of this formalism, that you can use this condition to create models. Now you can have anything that you like, like different temperatures and other stuff that we are going to define now. And, um, and then you have motors. You can have a chemical motor. You can have here a current, even though locally is detailed balance, globally is not detailed balance. So I can have a current. And then I can have also a motor and I can define efficiencies and so on. So uh, Brownian motors, in the, the simplest uh, formalism to model a Brownian motor is this. It's, just, it's very so simple. I mean, it's this, this condition, the equation that I erased, the master equation, and then you go to the computer, you solve the master equation, which is very simple because it's linear, and then you can have a lot of properties. And there you can have a lot of properties. Or you can, or you can also change beta in time. Let's say you can uh, let the system run with cold temperature for a while and hot temperature with a while, for a while. This is, uh, there is a famous um, example of, uh, it's called the flashing ratchet, which is more or less like that. Yeah. So, uh, I'm so slow, but it is good. I mean, if I prefer to be slow <laughs> and uh, that you capture all the, I mean, it's better to, if you understand everything, it, it's much better. Okay, so um, okay, the 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 detail balance condition, the detail balance balance condition in physics, it has also. Uh, A, a, a very intuitive uh, interpretation. Suppose that this is, this is EJ, this is energy, no? This is energy, this is EJ, and this is EI, and this is EJ minus EI. And what the detail balance conditions tells me is that the, the gamma from I to J Uh, uh, obeys this condition. And, and you can see why. Um, I mean, why first uh, uh, the system is in contact with the thermal bath. This is why energy is not conserved. But it's, 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 it's interesting that I can gain energy. So if I go from I to J, and J is more energetic, where this energy comes from? From the bath. So the bath is uh, introducing via fluctuations energy. And what is the typical value of the thermal energy, KT? 
So uh, this is this here, no? This is, uh, if this is delta E, uh, you can write this as delta E divided by kT. This is the ratio between the energy that you gain in the transition and the typical thermal energy. If this is very big, if, if my jump is super high, this is zero. And this means that this transition is impossible. Uh, and then I have a completely, the system is always going down, down, down. This happens if the temperature is very small. Uh, so uh, if the temperature is very small, you just go to the ground state of a system by these jumps because, because it's impossible to gain energy. You go down, down, down. This is, this is, uh, uh, this is actually what people use to, for machine learning and all these things, not to go to, to, to find the minimum of the error function. You go down and, and to avoid local minima, Usually you heat up the system a little bit. When you heat up, the system can go up, no? Uh, and then uh, you cool the system, and then you can make protocols for machine learning like that. Okay? So the probability, let's, well, these, are, these are not probability. These are uh, rates of transition rates. But it, it, they are related with the probability. If delta E is much bigger than kT, this means that you, you never go up. And if delta E is much smaller than kT, if you have a very high temperature, when you have a very high temperature, this is almost one, and then it's completely symmetric. So the system is in contact with such a hot bath that it cannot distinguish, it cannot see that it, there is a, uh, an energy uh, landscape, and it explores the whole thing in a uniform way. Okay, so uh, this is a, um, this is a, um, uh, the basic thing of uh, how to describe, uh, how to model uh, the dynamics of a system using the master equation. Now, uh, let's uh, add some fun. And uh, I always have this diagram, a system and a thermal bath, but I usually in, in all these motors and thermodynamic of information, we also uh, have an external agent. What the external agent will do? What do you think? The external agent, by definition, we have defined external agent as, as somebody who can uh, change the parameters in the Hamiltonian. So in this, uh, where the Hamiltonian appears here? Well, here is, we have a Hamiltonian, but uh, we just, first we discretize the system because we have wells or because it's quantum or whatever, and then we also, uh, uh, um, codify all the interaction between the system and the bath in these gammas. In these gammas, these gammas depends on the Hamiltonian. So, but the, what is the, the simplest way of uh, um, implementing here a modification of a parameter given by an external agent? What? Changing the rates. Changing the rates? Well, uh, it could be. But the rates are, really, really, are related with the the coupling between the system and the, and the, and the bath. So I guess for a, so imagine that uh, this is a qubit uh, or a, a spin, no? A spin up, a spin down. Uh, and the energy depends on the chemical, poten on the magnetic field, no? What is the simplest thing that the external agent can do? Huh? Change the magnetic field, and what is the consequence of that? There is not a con Changing the magnetic field doesn't affect the rates. It affects the, the energies. So what, uh, what an external, now we have an external agent. That modifies the, the energies. The energies can depend on a parameter. Or can depend on time. Uh, we, can, we can say that it, it depends on time. Well, let's put it like that. So uh, the effect of, of, uh, of an external agent is to change the energy level. What it is uh, so, uh, nice is that we, we can keep the detail balance condition that tells us how 
the rates must be. So this is the nice thing of all these theories that we derive the detail balance condition for a specific case where there is no external agent, everything is at the same temperature and so on. But the we can use this condition to model more complicated things. So this is what we are going to do. And in this case, it's the same. Everything that I've said before is still valid. Except that now the, this can uh, de uh, depend on time. Ah, and by the way, yeah, the rates will depend on time. Yeah, sorry. So, yeah, the rates will depend on time because, because if I include this condition here, unless I modify, the, yeah, the rates will depend on time. So I was wrong <laughs> when I said that it is. The rates have a part that depends on the coupling between the system and the bus, but it, they have another part which depends on the energies because Questions there? No? No, no, that's a good point. Uh, this is a bit a kind of, uh, it's not a circular argument, although it looks like a circular argument or even a contradictory argument. You use a situation, which is equilibrium, to find this condition for the gammas, and then you assume or you extrapolate, you say, well, this condition is valid anywhere. I mean, even if I have different temperatures, even if I have this depending on time, and so on and so on. What, uh, what is the justification of this? Well, the justification is that the gammas, in any theory, if you go from a microscopic theory, you can calculate the gammas using different theories. Like, for instance, if you have double wells, there is something called it the Kramer's uh, problem of, uh, of a transition, and then you get the gammas. You can get the gammas in quantum mechanics with something called the Bohr approximation that maybe some of you are, uh, have studied in, I don't know, uh, other cases. But you can get the gammas in different ways. And then uh, the gammas don't depend, depend on the energy and so on, but all these gammas obey this, obey this, 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 because they, they must obey this. And then you can use this. The gammas are like the dynamics of the system. So the, the, the hypothesis here is that these dynamics, uh, it, if, if I have the dynamics, and it's, it's how the system modifies uh, its, its shape, for instance, in a molecule, or how the system changes the state. Uh, the idea is that this is, always the same even if you have, a, if you have a, uh, a driving like here or even if you have anything. Uh, but it's true that you obtain this from equilibrium. I don't know if this is a... No, the local detail balance, we assume that it's never broken. We will see tomorrow that it can be broken if, if, if you have chemical reaction and so on. But this is, this, is, this is the basic condition that you use to find the master equation of a physical system. This is. You can change. You can say that the beta is local. You can say, like, as I mentioned, you can say that the E's depend on time. You can say a lot of things, but it's, this is always the guideline, let's say the basic guideline to, to write the master equation of a system. And as I said, this is a, this is a kind of top-down approach where I obtain this equation imposing the thermal state. But you have down to top approaches like Bohr, like the approaches that I've ma mentioned, Kramer's uh, Bohr approximation and so on. Um, and you reach the same. But this is more economic, let's say. This is much easier, although there are these problems, conceptual problems of you are deriving something for equi in equilibrium and you are extending this to non-equilibrium situations. Okay, so uh, I think I have to finish. So tomorrow we will finish this and start the information part, uh, the sec second law with information. And uh, yeah, I think you can only do the exercises one, two, three or so. Sorry. You have the group.
Oh, yeah.